Hi Josh, thank you for coming to talk to me today um, about wildlife photography. Um, I wonder if you could just start by telling me a bit about yourself and how you kind of got into, into this. Yes, so I'm now in second year studying natural sciences and I started photographing wildlife when I was about 11 or 12. Um, so I live in the countryside so it was kind of an obvious thing to do really. And I've been inspired by watching like David Attenborough documentaries on TV and then I sort of thought, well, I could do that myself. So I started photographing deer and hares around my house. And it's really hard at first because they're really shy. So you have to spend a lot of time like learning their behaviour and trying to get close to them. And a lot of time like lying in fields and crawling through hedges. And then eventually I got some really nice pictures of these hares and their deer. And so you've continued that in Cambridge, um, which might not be an obvious thing to most people that coming from the countryside, there's loads of wildlife. But what is it that in Cambridge you, you kind of spend your time photographing? Yeah, so, yeah, like you say, I was surprised how much cool wildlife there was in Cambridge. Um, so the highlight is definitely the peregrine falcons. Mm -hmm. And in Pembroke, we're really lucky, actually, because they live, like, right next to us. Uh, so you can even see them perching on the Pembroke Library sometimes, which is absolutely amazing because peregrine falcons used to be a really rare species just a few decades ago. But now they've made a massive comeback across the country. And you can see them in a lot of cities because the cities are actually a perfect habitat because the tall buildings are a lot like the cliffs that they nest on in the wild. And there are a lot of pigeons around, which are the ideal prey. So sometimes outside Pembroke, you can even see a peregrine falcon just killing a pigeon by the street. So that's been a really amazing experience. I think that's one of the, the most incredible species I've ever photographed. And I never expected to see them in Cambridge. Um, it's great to have the peregrines here, as you say. But it's not, not all just about Cambridge. Um, you went away to Lundy Island in North Devon. What were you doing there? Yeah, so on Lundy I was like a volunteer, so I was surveying puffins and, and full miles and kissy wakes and seals. So that was kind of my, my day job, if you like. And then in my free time I was photographing these species. So one of the things I really wanted to do was photograph and film puffins and guillemots underwater. Because mm -hmm. puffins are like one of the most popular species to photograph. There are probably like millions of pictures taken of puffins. And yet all the pictures are taken of them on land. And yet that's actually really not representative of like where they spend their lives mostly. Because they're really like a marine species. They spend most of their lives out at sea. And in the winter, they're just completely out at sea and they never come onto land. Mm. So I wanted to show them like in that environment. So I had my camera in underwater housing. And then I was snorkeling around with all the puffins surrounding me. And then they'd dive down and I could see them swimming under the water. And it was just absolutely mind boggling. Um, and I was doing this at sunset and sunrise as well. So the light was really cool. You get this sort of golden light under the water and all these birds swimming around with the bubble trails and things. It was just unreal. Working with the puffins, what was special about that experience? So I thought it was really amazing to be kind of immersed in their environment because if you just sort of look at puffins on the cliff top and you just watch them with your binoculars, you're kind of observing them from a distance, but you're not really experiencing like what it's like for them. Mm. Whereas when I was swimming around with them, like um, at the bottom of the cliff at sunset. Um, sometimes there were like large waves sort of crashing over me and stuff. That was really kind of experiencing the environment as it's like for the birds themselves. So I thought that was really amazing. And also sometimes I would like sleep out under a rock in order to be up at the colony at sunrise. And then I could like hear the kittiwigs, which is another species of seabird. I could hear them calling at night, which is absolutely incredible. I was really immersed in the whole seabird colony. And then when I was swimming as well, they were all sort of swirling around over my head. So yeah, it was just a totally different experience just to looking at them from a distance. Great. Well, thank you very much. Great to talk to you.